Well, oh, good morning. It's Saturday, uh, about 7.30. On the way to the Loose Rocker race. The, um, 20,000 to win today. They were supposed to run for 10,000 to win tomorrow, but the car count hasn't been near as what I think anybody had expected. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's so early in the season and coupled with the fact that diesel's five bucks a gallon, folks just didn't want to travel as far. I'm, I'm just guessing. But anyway, so they're going to run the 20, there were no time runs today. New entries, time runs only. So if you ran yesterday, you don't get a time run. Then they're going to go into the $20,000 to win race. And as soon as it's done, which unless something bad happens, they're going to go straight into the $10,000 to win race. All right, so we're in the lanes for first round. It's cold. Gusty ass tailwind. I mean, it's cold. 130. First pass yesterday. Buddy of mine went 29. He just went 26. Um, I got a 25 on it. I might be over it, optimistic, but I really think it's going to go at least a 25. So, we'll see. Sioux wagon dialed in 624. Almost heads up with Robert Hetzler's Mustang dialed in 625. Advantage Hetzler, but just by nine fouls. Finish line comes up. Hetzler gets the win light. 627 with the five. Five down bars and a victory. 107 miles an hour and 18 lights. All right. So we just run first round. I'm sitting back in the truck because that wind is nasty. Uh, like I said in the car, I dialed it a 25. A buddy of mine picked up three from his first pass yesterday. So I got over ambitious and dialed it down five for my first pass. I dumped it down there and killed probably, I don't know, at least one full mile an hour and went 27. Finish line was 005, so I tightened it up a bit more than I intended to. But it's all right, I got the win. Um, I'm moving on to second round without having to buy back. So, more like right, they just called second round. Um, Probably gonna dial up one to a 26, roll five out of the box, set up for a five, and uh, we'll see what the hell happens. Yeah. Carson Brown to the top end. Carson gets the win light, 19. 32 with a one on a 31. All right, so that didn't go well. I was 21, he was 19. I went 28 with a nine on a 26. Uh, you lay down almost a 50 pack, you're not gonna win. So we'll wait till second race.
Robert Hetzler and Tanner Miller, both of them wheels up, 22 to the 23. And the wind light will go. Oh, Hetzler is one thou under his 29 dial. 628 with a nine. Took 16, need to take 15 or less. Well, all done. Um, had the same numbers in the box where I was 001 yesterday. I was just guessing at what it needed. Put it on 29, uh, was 22. He was 23. I went 28 with a nine. Killing, I don't know, 1.3 mile an hour maybe. Broke up 001. Took 016 finish line. I mean, that, that's that's where I'm comfortable taking the finish line. Hey folks, it's Monday. It's a full week after I filmed all of that at the track. As you can see, I was frustrated. Really frustrated. So I waited to post a wrap up which is what this is, um, until I could get to a test and tin and try a couple things out. So a buddy of mine took the footage I had shot, zoomed in on my thumb, or I pushed on the button, and slowed it way down. Well, he found something interesting. Not all the time, but most of the time. When I let go of the button, my first movement isn't away. My first movement is push in and then away. Well, when you're talking thousands of a second, that's huge. I mean, that that's a big difference. And I've caught myself doing that on the practice tree before, but I always just thought, well, it's because I'm in a weird position and I'm on the practice tree. Well, obviously I've been doing it again, doing it in the car as well. And I've been doing it for a while because I've struggled with consistency, um, cutting lights for a while now, a couple of years. I've changed buttons and I've changed where the button was and all kinds of, you know, how far in, how how shallow and how deep inside the wheel the button is mounted, all kinds of goofy shit trying to figure this out when in reality it's the connection from here to here. So I did a couple of things. I straightened my wheel out. If you remember when you looked at the wheel before and your hands are supposed to be like this and the button should be right here. Mine with the way the wheel was, was here so the problem was with the button here when i would let go of the button i would have to let go this way so i took the wheel off i've never had it off it, it's gotten progressively crook, more crooked over the years it's always been a little crooked i tightened the steering box up that helped some so then i finally just took the wheel off i've never had it off um i wasn't even real sure how it came off so i took the wheel off turned it put it back on so now the button is right here so now the, the movement is, instead of it being across my body like this, like it was, my mo the movement is this way. It's straight up at the elbow. So I wanted to try that and see if it made any difference. I'm rambling, I know. It makes these things great. We've already discussed this. Deal with it. <laughs> so so I, I can handle, if I have an oddball flyer once in a while, but if you have two good lights and then you have three bad lights, well then you're wanting to change the box. So if you're set up for a 10, and, and I'm rambling. So if you set up for a 10, and if you go up and you're 12 and then you're eight, cool, you're within, the, you're within that window where you wanna be. But then if you go back up and you're 23, uh-oh, well maybe I missed it. And then you're 21, well if you're lucky enough you're still in, you think, oh shit, well now I've had two in a row. Well maybe I missed it again. Well, then you're 25. Well, and if you're still lucky enough to be in, which at this point, if you've cut three 20s in a row, you're more than likely sitting back at the trailer drinking a soda and eating a cheeseburger. But if you're still lucky enough to be in, well, now you want to pull 10 out. Well, and if you pull 10 out and then you hit it again like you were before, you know, you hit it again like you were when you were 8 and 12, well, now you're double O red. And that's where I was. I, I was, I was, I had that problem. So, we got to test and tune last week, this past Saturday, two days ago. This is Monday, so Monday, Sunday, Saturday, so I guess three days ago. Anyway, so we got to test and tune, wheel straight, letting go of the button this way. Um, never changed the time in the box. I'm not going to say it's fixed, but I think we've got something we can work with now. Because now when I let go of the button, and when it was late, it felt late when I let go of it. 
Before when I would let go of it, and it's like, man, that felt good. 25. Huh? Well, okay, I guess I just missed. You know, but now when it, when it was 21, when I let go of it, I thought, ooh, that might be a little late. 21. All right, cool. I go back up and I hit it again and go, that felt pretty good. 10. All right. We might we might have something now. But anyway, so so that's what we did. So hopefully moving forward, we got it set up to shift by time too, which none of that matters for this video. But it's just the thing back there. Um, <laughs> a little vice grip garage hand action going on right there. Yeah. Um, so it's set up to shift by time, which is what I've been wanting to do. Got that set where I'm pretty happy with it. I think I've got the button figured out. Hopefully we'll find out this weekend, but so, so that's a wrap on this. I've rambled on for way too long. I might have to try and cut some of this, but like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, Hell, maybe you're better off telling people you don't like and make them sit through this stuff. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I ramble. But anyway, so we'll be back next week, hopefully, with some footage of me actually going some rounds and not sitting in the car going... <laughs> after everything's done. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you in a bit.